Get on the centre of the road, you nearly run over a landmine. There's more, yeah. So this was a community we had before where there was maybe 200, 300 people, including very young children, and now all of those houses were bombed or destroyed and there are landmines just everywhere, which is, you know, incredibly sad. Probably about 50 to 100. You know, what's happened here? They've just been hammered. Which I thought exploded. Just a year ago. What? Might be a landmine here, we're unsure. Yeah, just gonna beat your door. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit more f since we were last there. Yeah. It's a lot worse than it was before. There's the memorial we we're talking about. We parked here before. Yeah, well, it's a trench now. Jesus Christ, what's happened here? These were the houses we had before. So we were last here, maybe about six months ago. And again, it's a complete ghost town now. What then? Tailgate shattered to the roads. What the f happened? So just driving out of Kalanina, it's a complete ghost town compared to when we were here last November. It's it's heartbreaking to see that this whole community, it was about 200 people still here and now gone. The Russians have come in and they've landmined it. Um, there's landmines everywhere. Um, which is disgusting because it means that if anyone comes back looking for their families then they're going to be injured or killed by this. It's, it's a complete act of terrorism. It's not even one person here. We had a look around all our usual areas. No, no one's here. It's shocking to see how this war has just destroyed communities and with the destruction of the buildings, people aren't going to come back here. You know, this, is, this is akin to genocide. And, but we were still a mission, still successes, even though we didn't help the people we set out to help. Um, there was a village slightly further back which we were able to help, um, and they are now the new front line as such. Thank you for Goldie for stealing this from the HMRC. It's vintage 2004. <laughs> from there we went back to Kramatorsk. So this is our accommodation for this evening, uh, very kindly put up by a, another humanitarian volunteer who's out here in Kramatorsk. There's no hotels or hostels in Kramatorsk, they're fully booked up by the army. And so this is what we're doing for dinner. Looking forward to it, Louis? Oh yeah. So it's Louis' birthday and we found the only cake in Kramatorsk. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Louis. Hey. <laughs> Sirens have just gone off in front of Torsk. While we were in Donetsk Oblast giving out humanitarian aid, we got a message from one of my friends in the Ukrainian army. They said they'd captured a soldier from the Donetsk People's Republic and asked if we wanted to interview him. Probably the most bizarre thing I've seen in Ukraine, he was happy he was shot by the Ukrainians because it meant it got him out of military service with the Russian army because he'd been trying to leave for a long time but his family had been threatened by the Russians so he had to stay there. Donetsk Oblast, where you know? You could look in his eyes, he was 100% genuine and he just didn't really want to be there. The Russian soldier actually told us that had he made it back to the Russian lines instead of being captured by the Ukrainians, he wouldn't have received medical attention. They would have stuck him in an aid centre or a building and just waited for him to die because they haven't got the resources to treat these people. And I don't think there's actually a huge amount of will from the Russians to treat the people of Donetsk or Luhansk because they don't see them as proper Russians. They see them as useful idiots, as Vladimir Lenin would say, to push their agenda. Думаю, перевяжу, сейчас допытаю, это убьют. Спасибо вот ребятам, огромное 
очень человеческое отношение. Я, ну, такое рассказывали. Пиздец, и пальцы режут, и яйца режут, блядь, и насилуют, и что так они, ну, как видите. Так как сам вижу, я, я вам честно говорю, я вчера как узнал, пропаганда работает полным ходом. The unit who captured him used part of their own budget to order in specialist medical equipment to treat this guy and put his arm in a proper arm brace. Мне давали антибиотики. Обезболивающие, кушать, конечно, курить, пить, все, отношения, никто не бил, ничего, очень хорошее, очень хорошее. It just shows that the Ukrainians, even though they have a deep hatred towards the people invading their country, they're not willing to break the Geneva Convention or take out their anger on individuals as they appreciate that a lot of people on the Russian side don't actually want to be there. This is perhaps my favourite checkpoint. It's got a garden shed, stuck a load of concrete bricks on each side of it. <laughs> we then went on to Kharkiv to an estate we've been to before. Uh, 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 Shrapno. Yeah, yeah Shrapno cut, it, cut it his... We build a course, started a course, like, uh, uh, removed his home and uh, uh, his, like... And he came out of the street. Three zuba. One minute, one minute. There, though, they are very desperate because it's a very impoverished part of Kharkiv. Most of the residents are elderly. It's a lot more people down here, they're just waiting in the shade rather than standing out in the sun. So, we told we'd have enough about 100 people. Apparently, 3,000 people live here, so there's a big old, big old queue. We gave them loads and loads of food and different bits and clothing, and everyone was really happy to see us. And they actually said our van is a mythical van because last time we were there, it rained and then it's been scorching out here, and we turn up with the van. <laughs> Within about an hour, it starts raining again. So it's great to see some of the same old faces as before, as well as some new faces. A lot of people started moving back to the region since it's nice still being bombed a lot, but since the front line has been pushed back. Um, Did you say there's two disabled people? Oh, yeah, yeah, give her, give her a so um, oh, Google Maps has stopped working in Kharkiv because they jammed the signal to stop the rockets coming in. So this is our current Google Maps. Yeah, we're heading west, which is good. <laughs> Rather be heading west than east. Uh. <laughs> From there, we went back to Kharkiv and helped a uh, group that supports children with Down syndrome and autism in Kharkiv. And it was great to catch up with those guys because last time I spoke to Lena, the founder, she was living in an old Soviet block as a flat being destroyed. Thank you very much. Uh, England and uh, Ukrainian like friendship. Best of the best. <laughs> but it looks like things are on the up for them since the Russians have been pushed back, which again is fantastic. Uh, these are people who live in Kharkiv. They're using a community centre at the moment as their sort of base of operations. But it's great to bring them the supplies they need because uh, they get very little help from the government. Yeah.